appreciate you, man. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having us. Of course, we're huge fans of uh, of your products. Um, I mean, obviously, so are we. So are we. <laughs> I guarantee it. You know, electricians, we're we're all tool nerds, and um, yeah. a tool that makes work better that you have to replace less is ideal. And um, absolutely. And you guys make uh, top quality products. So, uh, first of all, thanks for for taking the time, and thanks for sending some uh, some tools over for us to kind of yeah. test out and play with. Um, no problem. You know, we uh, we have our own sets of, of uh, tools from your company. Um, and it yeah. was nice, nice to get some new new models of things and see what kind of stuff you guys are working on. Sure. What, what'd you think? Uh, we really liked it. I was a big fan of the uh, twin grip pliers. Yeah. Um, just kind of a cool innovation to put that uh, grip option in the face of the head. Yeah. I thought that was pretty rad. Um, and we really, my business partner, Josh, really liked your your snap. Uh, what is it? The Cutex? The Cutex, yeah. Cutex uh, the X. blade. It's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, and you, you would think something like it's a, it's a standard 18 millimeter snap knife plate. You think, eh, yeah. What can you, what can, what kind of innovation can you come up? Because you can go to the store anywhere and find what 10, 12 of them, like to pick sure. from. Oh yeah. There's no, there's no real innovation, but for us to come up with that stabilization bar, it's like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. It does. It sets it apart. So before we really get started, just yeah. for for myself and anybody out there that's listening, sure. Silly question, but Nipex yeah. or Knipex? <laughs> You know, that's, that's probably the number one question. I'm sure any, anything we get, it's the number one question. In fact, we came up with a t-shirt that says how to pronounce the name of the company. Okay. So for us in North America, it's Knipix. Knipix. Yeah. It's Knipix. Okay. okay. I've heard any, I've, I've heard anything from Nipex to mm -hmm. K-Nipex to whatever. Uh, but for us in North America, it's Knipix. Knipix. Okay, great. And I read it. I read up on kind of the history of the company, and it's it's real similar to like a um, like a Klein Tools history, where it kind of started in the 1800s with a kind of a small Smith, yep. um, and kind of blossomed from there. What, from your perspective, from your words, what sets Knipix apart from companies like a Klein or a Fujia in Japan? Um, how do you guys kind of differentiate? Uh, I would say there's a couple of things. One is going back to that Cuddy X example that we gave you. We, we don't come up with me too, what we call me too products. We don't just come up with everybody else's same exact product and, you know, get the cookie cutter out and say, okay, this is our product. We put our name on it. Yeah. We always come up with stuff that has uh, innovation to it. That's different from everybody else. Yeah. We'll take the same theme. Like, you know, like you mentioned the twin grip, which is uh, a yeah. slip joint pliers. We'll take the same theme, but we'll make it, we have to improve it. We have to make something better, okay. something differentiates from, from the market. So that's, that's one thing. Uh, another thing you were mentioning the history a little bit, just a little bit further on the history, we're still owned by the same family. So we're still family owned. Um, huh. We're not, you know, some of the misconceptions out there is we're owned by some big corporation out there. No, we are not. We're still owned by the same family. Wow. Um, and just like any place else, you know, that got started, the original concept, the original uh, start of Knipix was the guy made pliers in his home basement. Huh. <laughs> he had a forging. He was he was forging tools in his basement. Right. So he started out with a, a few tools. Um, this is the, the 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 history that goes behind it, and um, just took off from there. And the other was thing it, I think, yeah, the other wasn't thing it like was, a carpenter's plier or something? Was like the first thing they did. The carpenters and the the farriers pincers. So think okay. about it. Back in the 1880s, wh yeah. what was the mode of transportation? That's that's horses. So yeah. you got to take care of the horses. So yeah. one way to do that is you have to take care of the shoes. So yeah, it's basically how the the company got started. Interesting. So, to, to add to that other point too, I think the biggest thing for us also is quality. I mean, you, anywhere yeah. you see any of our marketing material, we always always go for the quality. That's what we're we're known for. Yeah. Uh, again, we don't just, just mass produce a bunch of tools and say, oh, here you go. Yeah. It all has to be about quality. Because like you said early on, you want tools that are going to do the job that are designed to do the job. Yeah. And that's what we're focused on. And you know, it's funny because it always comes down to the little details because like I, I'm a big fan of Klein tools as well. I've tried out some Fujia um, hand tools. Sure. And there, there are elements about everything that I like. Um, but those little details are what gets you like, for example, the one thing I really like about Knipex uh, pliers is the ease of motion right yeah. out of the box. Like exactly. uh, 
your rivets, your joints are smooth and operate really smooth. Where, whereas, you know, not to not climb, cause I really like climb, but when you get a pair of climb pliers, a lot of times you really got to work those suckers in yeah. and, uh, you know, and it's, it's stiff, <laughs> it's super stiff. And yeah. I don't necessarily know what the, um, and from an engineering standpoint, what the difference is there, but when you get a pair of Knipex pliers, they're, they're like butter right out of the box. Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. What, what is your best selling item? Oh man, we've got, uh, you know, we've got, I don't know how many different pliers that we, we manufacture. Yeah. I would probably say like the Cobra pliers and the pliers yeah. wrenches, obviously those are, that's what we're really known for. Yeah. I would say those are probably going to be some of our biggest seller out there, but you know, with, with, expanding in North America and getting our mm. presence known, even though we've been around since 1883, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's all across the board right now. So it's, it's exciting. Yeah. So you, so, you know, Knipic starts as a small company out of a basement, yeah. basically making pincers for horseshoes. Yeah. Houses don't have electricity in them at the time. So, <laughs> you know, how, when, when did you guys start? I mean, how did that all kind of come about? You, I saw, I see you've got tons of plumbers wrenches yeah. So you, you would, you gear toward plumbers, you gear toward electricians. Um, how did that all kind of come about? I think it's just, just like anything else. It's like, you know, Hey, there's a need for, yeah. this pair of pliers, how can we make it better? It's, it, yeah. it's still the same philosophy that we, we apply today. Yeah. Same as the one that applied in back 1883. It's like, okay, what's out there? What can we improve upon? What are people asking for? We do a lot of research. We, we watch a lot of uh, end users at work. I know, mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the key things that we do, like the forged wire stripper that we sent you. One of yeah. the key things that we did with that, an engineer from Germany came over and worked with electricians in Chicago for about two, three months. Okay. And just literally looked over your shoulder, like okay. literally look, looked over your shoulder, Doug, and said, hey, how do you do this? What's frustrating? Yeah. And that's how some of the innovation comes about. So I think that same philosophy is, is still exactly what we do today. Okay. I really like those, those forged wire strippers as well. We gave those to our apprentice. He, he really cool. liked them as well. I love the easy use. I love that internal yeah. kind of uh, beveled blade that, uh, I don't know what you would call that, but it's kind of a uh, more a, style. Yeah, it's more of a yeah. step cut kind of a blake. So yeah. what's unique about that, just to give you a little bit of inside information, what's unique about that is a lot of the blades you'll see that just have two solid blades and they just come together in the middle. Right. Well, that's not always that's not always the best way to um, cut a piece of material. Sure. So what we've done is that step cut blade. It actually really cuts uh, each one of the wires. If you cut them like Romex, it really cuts each one of the wires separately and just gives you a better cut. It's a lot cleaner of a cut and it's a lot easier of a cut. Is that because the blades themselves overlap one another? They kind of, yeah, okay. it's, a, it's a sheer cut. So a lot of times what you'll see is that, like I said before, the, the blades will just end up meeting each other in the middle. Yeah. It's not a sheer type cut, a sheer type cut the blades actually overlap each other. And that's what you that's what you really want to get a nice clean cut. Okay. That's cool. What, what yeah. innovations, what innovations are you most excited about right now? Like what are some things that you guys are doing that you're like, this is crazy. Oh my gosh. There's so much stuff going on. It's, it's yeah. Obviously, I can't share a lot of the details. On oh, okay. It, but right on. I, I, you know, just to kind of tease you a little bit, there are some really exciting stuff that we're working on for, for next year. Okay. Um, yeah, I, can't, I wish I could go into details, but I can't. Hey. But just, just trust me, what you've seen so far, the yeah. innovation, it's going to be over the top on some of that stuff. I can't wait. Yeah. What, what is like, one thing I'm seeing in the industry more and more so now, and is um, companies start, they get rolling and they kind of have a lane that they stay in, but then yeah. eventually they see this market share opportunity and they start to veer into other lanes. So for example, my business partner and I talk a lot about how in the past five years, maybe more, you've seen brands like Milwaukee and DeWalt who mm -hmm. typically are known for power tools started as, as cord powered yeah. tools, and that, you know, they're stepping more into or, or attempting to step into the hand tool market. Correct. Making, you know, I know Milwaukee's got this brand new line that they're coming out with of, of uh, electrical pliers. Yeah. Um, number one, what do you what are your thoughts on that? And number two, I've seen that that Knipex has has got a line of insulated drivers. Is and I don't know if you can talk about it, but are there plans in the future to veer into other markets outside of your lane? Um. So just going back to like our fundamental base of how we got started, what we, what we focus on is pliers. We are, we are the professional plier manufacturer. That's what yeah. we do. So to answer the, 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 
30,000 foot view to your question is yeah. that's where we stay. That's, that's our lane. We, we yeah. focus on players because when you do something for this long, yeah. you're, you're pretty good at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're, you're, yes. you're pretty darn good at it. So we yeah. like to focus on that lane because that's what all of our experience is at. That's what we like to focus at. Yeah. We could pour a lot of resources into it. So that's pretty much where we stay at is not to say that we won't venture and look at some other things, Right. But as far as the world's largest professional player manufacturer, that's us. That's where we tend to go above and beyond anybody else. So that's where we like to stay at. Yeah. I think that's wise. Honestly, I, um, I don't know, man, I I'm a, I'm a firm believer in like, you don't have to do everything. Yeah. And in fact, I think that when you do, you tend to dilute or dilute what, what you're doing in the first place. Yeah. Um, which is why when we see companies like, you know, Milwaukee and, and DeWalt step into making, uh, hand tools. I'm, I'm always sure. du- dubious, but um, apparently this new Milwaukee line is supposed to be pretty good. They just yeah. created a new, a new, um, <clears throat> I guess, facility in Wisconsin, and and this is their new step. But um, I like that you guys are choosing. Like, this is what we do, and this is what we do well. Yeah, I, I think that's wise. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and just like we talked about before, just even simple little things of taking an existing tool and then making improvements on it. You're like, wow, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think you could start making improvements on something that's been around for so long. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it makes so, sense. I mean, the, the longer you go in in, in an industry, yeah. you start to see the little things that could improve, right? You start to see yeah. the little needs. And, and just to, to add on to that point as well, just talking about some of the history as well. Yeah. Um, we, we manufacture, we develop everything in Germany. So okay. there's, there's obviously, when you think of German hand tools, you think of the first thing that pops in your mind is, wow, that's quality. And that's what we try to achieve as well. But a lot of people don't realize that we have our own facility. We actually have machinery that makes our own machinery that makes tools. So we control okay. the pro- we control everything. So that's another key okay. thing. We don't rely on other outside sources. We control everything in-house, which, you know, with all our expertise in player manufacturing, that's huge. That's key. I mean, that, I that's what that's, really keeps us innovative. I think that's genius too. I mean, yeah not having to rely on outside sources. Speaking, speaking of which, have you got, you know, what have been the challenges that you've experienced since 2020, as far as, um, <laughs> as far as material shortages, supply chain shortage, what's, how's that affected you? Just, just like everybody, everybody else, everybody in not only our industry, but I mean, name an industry that you buy, you're a consumer, you yeah. buy a product, name it. You yeah. know, we've all been affected by it some, some way, shape or form. Yeah. You know, we're getting back to it right now. I mean, obviously, longer lead times, uh, material costs more, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we're we're pushing through with it. We're still launching new products. We're still producing uh, a lot of pliers. So, yeah. you know, just like everybody else, you you come up with other alternatives to get yeah. get material here and there, do what you can. But, you know, we, we're, we're adapting like everybody else. Yeah, it's been super challenging across yeah. the board. For us, it's been um, not necessarily tools, but materials for um, installations of yeah. you know, home services and whatnot. Um, I was just talking with my business partner, Josh, and he said he got a little bit more insight into why we can't get up. Because right now we can't get a hold of 400 amp meter sockets. Really? They, they just aren't a thing. Wow. And um, like a crop, people will laugh at you if you ask. And so <laughs> we've been on waiting lists for the better part yeah. of a year now had to put a bunch of jobs on hold. And we just found out that it's basically the way he described it was that a lot of the, I guess, um, the, where they kind of put the, the tools together, that's all in yeah. Mexico. And I guess where the steel comes from is, is, um, Japan or some of the resources for the steels, Japan. And both of wow. those, both of those arenas kind of shut down during COVID. So as far as those products, it's just been a nightmare. Yeah, exactly. And you know, you're talking about wire and, and things like that. We buy a lot of uh, wire for us to do competitive cut, cutting on like, okay, does this really cut 12.3? Does this cut BX? Whatever. Yeah. We notice over the, like the last, I don't know, last six months to eight months, you know, rolls of Romex that you used to be able to get, I would say fairly inexpensive or there's one roll on the shelf. It's locked up. It's 175 to 200 bucks for a roll of yes. Romex. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's crazy out there, but um, it's crazy out there for sure, yeah. man. Yeah. It's been tricky for everybody. Do you, um, when, when you guys are innovating, coming up with new things, yeah. are you, are you, what's, what's it like competitive wise in the industry? I mean, are you, are you guys always looking over your shoulder for companies like a, like a Klein or a Fujia to like, as far as like, have you had any issues with them? 
where you feel like they're like, well, that's our design or that's so close to our design that like there's, there's issues there. No. Cause like yeah. I said, our, our whole thing is taking a product, making it innovative, put yeah. some, put different feature, incorporate different features, listen to the end users, listen to you guys like, okay, does this make sense? Does this work? Uh, um, that's, that's, that's what we focus on. Yeah, there is competition. There's always going to be competition out right. there. Um, down from, you know, some of the smaller big box stores, there, there's always going to be competition out there, but where we strive is for that quality, for the innovation. Awesome. That's what separates it from everybody else. I think that's great. Cause I mean, yeah. that, that is how you separate yourself. Just focus on what you do well and keep doing it better and, and forget about the competition. That's, that's, we focus the same way. It's like, there are so many small electric companies in, in the country, let alone yeah. in our, in our little town of Frederick here. And I just don't care because it's, there's <laughs> just so much work. It's just like, with yeah. you guys, it's just so much demand. I would imagine that it's just like, yeah, man, let's just keep focusing on what we do well. And, and it doesn't matter. And our, our, our owner always constantly reminds us of where we've come from in the past of, yeah. and our focus is on, it's focused on quality. It's focused on the innovation. It's also focused on the employees. It's fo- focused on a lot of, not a lot of companies, they say that, but they don't mm. really believe it and, and focus on it. But our company is really focused on the, the quality of employees that we have and yeah. the work that they put out. I mean, it's it, it's just you can't say enough about it. So that, that transcends into, you know, it sounds cheesy, but it transcends transcends into like we got great employees. We're going to get great tools. So that's yeah, kind of the I connection. Between the two of them, so. does, does the work culture at Knipex, does that kind of facilitate in your in your opinion? happy Ab- happy happy people making good tools a- absolutely i mean yeah. come on where else can you go every single day and t- play with tools yeah look at what's in the future put some ideas together talk with the engineers talk totally. with the end users look at some applications i mean how much better does that get you know what i'm saying it's pretty cool yeah <laughs> how did, how did you this- get involved uh with kinepics hmm? yeah, man i have been around for a while in the tool business so long okay. story as short as i can make it i was actually a general contractor okay I was a carpenter, so I swung a hammer for probably 15 years. I did mostly residential work, yeah. so obviously I worked with a lot of electricians. Mm-hmm. So then I worked with one of the, uh, you didn't mention it, but one of the other larger power tool companies. I, I opened my mouth one day and I said, you know, whoever came up with this, they really weren't talking to the end user. They really should have talked to an end user about it. They're like, well, well, why don't you come and take a look at what we have and maybe we'll make you an offer. So that's how I got started in the, really? yeah, the product management side of things. And Okay. So I've been with a couple other companies, yeah. um, all in tools or tool related kind of kind of uh, market. But I've just kind of been honestly, just like you guys, tool junkie. I'm a, I'm a tool junkie. I I love t- Dude, <laughs> tools. I love. It's becoming a real problem, honestly. <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's a, it's a problem it's you a, don't have enough. You know, it's such a bummer. I mean, I love if I could every time I see something that I'm just like, I got, I, I got, have, have, I have to have, have it. it. Yeah. Gotta have it. Yeah. And that's fine. It is what it is. Uh, <laughs> what is, um, for, as far as like moving into the future for your company, it, you know, um, marketing wise, I see, you know, we, we were approached by your team to say, Hey, we'd, yeah. love, to, we'd love to chat. I, yeah. you know, obviously, obviously that sort of stuff's going on. Um, what, what other, what other steps are you guys taking to market uniquely in, in the new world of, of social media? Yeah, you can, I mean, you said it right there. You can't yeah. deny social media. That is just yeah. huge. So we're all over. Uh, Maggie does a fantastic job of, of reaching out and making sure that our presence is well known on social media. That's something we obviously want to focus on. And yeah. the, the weird thing is, in a good way, um, COVID kind of forced that on a, a lot of people to like you were you were thinking about it before and you were yeah. dabbling in it before. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, it's like, well, wait a minute. Hey, this, this, this is the, this is the route to take, you know, not that we didn't know that before, but we're, you're starting to really see some benefit and some, some, some marketing capabilities of it. So that's obviously with anybody else, that's, that's what we see the future at. There's still going to be the, one of the things that we do a lot is if you see us at a trade show, we demo our tools constantly. Hmm. You're at a trade show in the booths are almost always packed with people asking us questions and, Oh, I didn't know you guys made that. I didn't know the tool did that. I didn't know that, you know, that was yeah. your, that's your tool, you know, stuff yeah. like that. But totally. our big thing is you'll never, you won't see us like standing around. We're always demoing tools because we believe okay. that if you show somebody what that tool can do, yeah. it's, it's a lot easier in their head. Like, Oh, wow. That's what that does. You know? Right. So that's why that's another portion of, 
of our marketing presence. And of course, there's always going to be the printed marketing material, although you're starting to see a, a little less of that because, mm -hmm. because of the online presence, the social yeah. media. But, you know, uh, the, the, right now, the, the, the sky's the limit. The future is just yeah. wide open. So that, I think that's where we're starting to see uh, some big impact is obviously the social media piece of it. When you look to like an online brand ambassador, what are you guys looking for? Um, you know, somebody, somebody passionate. I mean, that's one of the big things we look at, even with our own employees, we're looking at somebody who's got passion. If you got, if you got passion, I mean, it shows, it shows yeah. in everything you talk about, everything yeah. that you do, all your work that you have, you know, we're looking for somebody obviously knowledgeable in the, in the field that they're in, whether it's a mechanic, a plumber, electrician, you know, obviously the, you know, what kind of presence they have in social media, things like that. But yeah you know, representing, it's, a, it's a, it, you know, it's a, it's a lot to represent uh, a, a tool brand like Canipix because we have high quality expectations. So That's right. we have high yeah. quality tools. So, you know, it, right. the, but you know, when, when you do find that it's, it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I hope that, I hope that answers it for you. It does. It totally answers it for me. I mean, I, I know there are a lot of people out there that are uh, eager, eager to find out like what new, yeah products you guys are working on. I know that yeah. like the second I, there's so many people that I follow on Instagram in particular that just do tool review videos. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, it's all you see is maybe their hand and sure. you know, the, the product. So I know there's a lot of that out there, a lot of YouTube videos featuring yeah. and showcasing how tools work. So I know that's great for, for you guys in your future, man. Like just instead of you all just creating the content or a commercial, You've got yeah. all of these people out there that love your stuff, yeah. sharing, sharing that passion. And obviously along with the social, social media thing is all the little videos and little clips, even little things like, you know, for, for four seconds, we'll shoot how to like cut a piece of whatever. And people write back, oh, I didn't know you could do that. I didn't mm -hmm. know you did that. Yeah, I didn't that's know funny. that's what you did with the tool. So that's a lot of fun. That's actually really cool. We're, we're going to focus on a lot more of that this year too. Okay. Is we did a thing, uh, what was it? You know, again, COVID brought out a lot of good ideas. I literally mm -hmm. filmed a bunch of tool tips in my garage as a backdrop, yeah. and my son was filming me. And you know, we're, and people writing them in saying, "Wow, I didn't, I didn't know you guys made that tool." Or that's a pretty cool tip. I didn't know you can do that. So yeah. we're gonna you start to you'll start to see a lot more of that at the end of this year, beginning of next year. We're starting to focus on a lot more of that as well. What What is your experience with like um, modern? workforce like young people coming yeah. into the workforce what, what are you guys seeing as far as that's concerned in america like do you have a lot of young people that are interested in working in this industry that you see is it is it more people that have been in the trades already it, i think it depends on like the, the exposure that i get for for that type of uh, application is at the trade shows so it's okay. always exciting like uh, you know nika's obviously coming up this year it's always exciting to see the, the, the young apprentice, apprentice coming in and start to talk to them and start to tell them about your brand and things like that. So it's mm -hmm. always, a, I, I love that part of it yeah. because, you know, they're so new to the business. They're new to being an electrician. They're new to the tools out there. They're not really sure what's out there, what they should yeah. buy and things like that. So that's exciting. And so I, I think there's, all, there's always going to be the, you know, having been in the trades for so long myself, I, mm -hmm. I'm a huge, huge proponent of it. I think there's just something about, um, there's, so, there's something about it. I mean, something about working with your hands and, mm. and stepping back. I mean, you, uh, how many projects have you done? You walk back and you go, wow, I, I, I did that. That was yeah. pretty cool. I did that every day, so, man, every day. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah I, I, I don't think you're ever going to see that. I, I don't think you're ever going to see that go away. And in fact, it kind of, you know, it kind of, uh, invigorates you when you see that these young people yeah. coming in at, like asking you a ton of questions, like, what, is, yeah. what, what about this one? What about that one? What did this tool do? So it's fun to tell them about that. It's fun to pass on that knowledge. Totally. Do you, yeah. do you see in um, the Knipex company, in the warehouse, whatever the case may be, are you guys hiring a lot of younger people coming in that, because I, I just get this feeling that there's more, more people are just young people focused on, I'm going to go to college as opposed to the yeah. older adage in this, com in this country, which was like, hey, you can get a factory job and yeah. make a good living. What are you guys seeing in that regard? Yeah, we're, we're seeing we're seeing that as well. I mean, especially yeah. to give you a little insight into our, our German facility in Wuppertal, Germany, they have a program there where they uh, hire these uh, apprentices and they're young. I mean, 
uh, the cool part about it is there, it's a couple year training program for them and they yeah. get hands on from day one. They get all kinds of training uh, on every piece of equipment. So they're mm. very knowledgeable when they walk out of there. So no, we're, we're, we're a huge, huge fan of that. So yeah, we, we've seen it. So, I mean, okay. that's the only way you can really tap into what does the future market look like if you yeah. don't tap into that. Um, you know, you're going to be behind the eight ball. So we don't, we don't definitely want to do that. We obviously want to tap into that. that or younger. You, yeah. Yeah. It is, is there like, it does, does Knipex in the States offer some sort of like program for say there's young people that want to get into tool making or, or working it for, they'd be interested in working for Knipex. What do you guys offer? I mean, we could certainly, certainly look at something like that. We have looked yeah. at some programs like that, get a, get some apprentices in here for the summer to take a look at, you know, some of the marketing stuff that we put out it takes a lot yeah. of a lot of work to put some of the trade shows together to put some okay. of the some of the programs together. So yeah, we've definitely looked into that. We are looking at it for the future. Cool. Since we don't manufacture here in the United States, it's a little bit different. But that yeah, absolutely, sense. right, absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah, I've, I've, I'm always like curious and concerned about that to some extent because of the the massive push for everybody to go to college. I just yeah. you know, I, like you're saying, it's always exciting to see young people that are interested in working with their hands. Anytime I meet yeah. a young person that's, I have all these kids in my neighborhood and I garden. And when one of them comes over, I don't push it on them, but if one yeah. of them's interested or curious, I light right up because yeah. it's like most kids don't care. Yeah. You know? And um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's something I'm, you know, worried about, but. But, but like, like you were saying before, when you get somebody like that who shows mm. an interest and shows a little bit of passion in it, Boy, oh boy, doesn't that just get you all fired up? Like, yeah, man, big time. Let me, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Let me show you this. Yeah, I'm Go such ahead. a nerd. Even with clients, I've got to be careful <laughs> with clients not to, yeah. it's hard to understand. Like once you get into your your trades dialect and lexicon and your the words that you use on a daily basis to communicate with people at the supply house or other electricians, yeah. um, it's hard to understand that those words will go over people's heads that aren't in the yeah. industry. You get so accustomed to speaking that way that exactly. you'll, I'll, I'll talk to a client and get all fired up because they'll ask a question. And then they'll be like, I don't know what you're saying. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, man. I'm trying to, <laughs> how do I say that? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm you know, I, 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 I'll say this out loud. Yeah. So college isn't for everybody. No, for the sure. Trades, the trades offer, think about what the trades offer. They offer uh -huh. you a skill that, that, where else are you going to pick up a skill like that? The, the pay, I mean, come on. It's great. It, it, yeah. The it, it, yeah. The downside it, is it's hard. You know, I, and I, I think that might be, I think, I think that it, the fact that it's challenging, like I was, I'm on this, we're working on this really old 200 year old home doing a complete rewire. Really? It's, it's brutal. Where it's downtown Frederick. We're in Maryland. We're in a, okay. in a historic town. So, so it's all knob and tube was that's what yeah total wow. total rewire some knob and tube a lot of 50s rag wire okay. uh, actually 30s i think i think it was yeah. um the small uh fuse panels that were acting as sub panels in each <laughs> uh, space were like 30s era any anyway wow. it's um I'm, I'm there working yesterday and there's a mason working in the basement and we're both like yeah. sweating sweating through our clothes and yeah. we run into each other halfway through the day ask him how it's going and he's talking about how hot it is in the basement he can see the vapor coming off the floor when he puts <laughs> water on it and he's like but then he says, he's like, yeah, you know, but I, I don't complain because after one summer and one winter in the trade, you know what to expect. Yeah. You know, and um, I don't know. I just feel like sometimes that the challenge of, of trade work or the physical challenge of it yeah. um, might keep people from saying that's something I want to do. And also maybe past culture, yeah. past trade culture of people being like, I don't know. I don't know if I, cause I, I didn't come into the trades till I was 35. Okay. Uh, but I'm from a bunch of blue collar dudes i was raised by a bunch of uh car guys gearheads <laughs> and uh and so there was a part of me that was like i don't know man i you know i, I don't know if that's the world for me and yeah. uh tried a bunch of things and you know what i learned was i cannot sit down yeah, i know I can't sit in a desk i yeah. a suit and tie corporate office is is this hard for some and yeah. to me the trades can be hard but man it's fun we have oh such a good time yeah yeah i mean and again just walking away going Man, I, I did, did that. that. I Wired did that. that whole house. Everybody yeah. is everybody in my family's exhausted of me being like, look at that, the house right there. I did that. <laughs> you know, every time you drive by, it's like, oh, we wired, you know, they're like, I know you did. You said that yeah. last time we drove by this house. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. 
but it's a point of pride. You know, it's, yeah. it's something that you're, you're proud to do or, or, you know, um, especially when you're doing exterior work on the side of the building, that's visible. Oh. You know, you've got to put that extra yeah. effort in to make sure that's beautiful. So every time you drive by, you're like, man, that's a good looking service right there. Yeah. You know? My, you know, all my pipes are, they're not crooked. All my Heck connections that no. I, I bent exact 90. Yeah. You know, I bent right. it over another pipe. Look at, look that's at that right. bend over there. That takes a little bit of skill to do. That. It takes a lot of skill. I am notorious for stopping in the middle of an alley to just admire good beautiful, work. Con, beautiful yeah. conduit, you know, or, you know, likewise, if you see something that's just horrendous, it's hard not to stop in your tracks. Well, and think about this too. I'm sure you do this all the time. I mean, working on your own house. Yeah. I mean, I, I rarely have anybody except for electrical work. I, I, you know what? Yeah. It, just electrical work. I have, I have a friend of mine who comes in and does my electrical work, but yep. everything else in my house, yeah. I, I can tackle just about anything. Yep. Yeah. I'm the same way with plumbing, plumbing and carpet. I all, in fact, I'm the same way with everything except electrical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my electrical and then everybody else did because like for, for me, I could, I could figure it out. I could frame yeah. a wall. It's not rocket science, but my buddy Garrett's way better than I am at it. Yeah. And I'll be sending just, it to smart. Yeah. Just the little tips and tricks that you've learned over the years. I mean, that's the exactly. other thing. I mean, you yeah. can go to school for, for some of that stuff, but when you're on the job site and you, you remember things, you make, you make a lot of mistakes. I'll, I'll admit it. That's you right. make a lot of mistakes, but I, I guarantee you, if you do repeat that mistake, it'll be like, Oh yeah, yeah. That's what I did. I'll, this is how I know how to fix it. And, like, and, I don't, and also I don't know nothing, nothing's more irritating than repeating a mistake. I absolutely get frustrated with myself when I do something that I've done before. It's just yeah. like, oh, come on, man. And, but, <laughs> I know those mistakes that. are how you learn. That's how yeah, you get better. Yeah, exactly. And that's and what separates that separates you from everybody else. So look it's at, so look true, at the quality man. of my work. I mean, that's right. You know, I'm the kind of guy that I can't walk away and go, you know, I can't see it from my house. Well, yeah, because I'm working on it. I, I can't do that. That's a joke we make constantly. We constantly make the I can't see it from my house joke yeah. because we'll find something absurd in a house. You go in to do some a service call or something. Yeah. And you know, somebody obviously applied the can't see it from my house rule. And you're just like, man, it's wild. Uh, it just, just boggles my mind. Like, okay, take pride in <laughs> take pride in what you do, man. Take pride I mean, in gonna, what you do. Exactly. That's right. Yeah, we we told our apprentice the first day he came to work for us, they said every single step in every move that you make, if you're tying in a switch box every step in the process, yeah. the hole that you cut, the measurement to set the hole, yeah. the way you strip your wires, the way you, you splice your grounds, every step in the process is an opportunity to do something to the best of your ability. Exactly. Take your time and, and be proud of every movement and it'll, but, it'll get better and better. And it just comes with time. Like I was training, I was training a, a kid to frame with me. We were doing a basement job and I was training on a frame yeah. And we were all we're doing wooden studs in a basement. And I'm like, okay, let's start from here, do this. And he's like, well, why is it taking so long? I'm like, Be because think about it. I said, steel, you got wooden studs. What yeah. goes on the wooden studs? Drywall. Okay. Yeah. What's going to, the, the customer wanted cabinets hung for a bar. So, yeah. Okay. If the studs are not plumb, what happens to the cabinets? If, this, right. if there's no blocking in place, what happens? That's right. And they finally started to get it at the end of the job, but it's little things like that. You're like, you know what, you, like you said, it's every little thing along the way adds up to, a, if it's wrong, it's wrong all the way through. That's right. It's those little details, just like with your, your pliers. It's, it's yeah. that little, the rivet that makes it move easy. It's the same yeah. thing with every little, we're working, that old house that we're working on right now is old homes are, I'm sure, you know, are just such a bear and they're, they're yeah. at least double the time that you would spend. Oh, yeah. just, just for example, you know, um, a couple of weeks ago, we're setting ceiling boxes through this whole house. And it's like, yeah. we just get started for a ceiling box of the day. I'm in the kitchen. Let's do it. Go up. There's just, there were no standards in 1850, right? There were, of course there not. were no, and so like, you know, you don't have any 16 on center, yeah. no 20. No, so what is that? Got, exactly. So you've got to now, okay, well, I've got a, what would have taken me 15 minutes in a new home yeah. ceiling box. And it's probably going to take me an hour and a half. Cause now I got to cut the entire ceiling, uh, joist yeah. to joist. I've got to, you know, um, but it, you and know, those are little lessons yeah. over and over. And I'm sure, I'm sure you're working with true two by four material. Oh yeah. Big two, two by 10, two by, I mean, it's and, a true two inches in warped as hell. Nail through that. So, oh. Warped as hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Putting a nail, drilling through it, putting oh. a staple, trying to staple in it. Oh my gosh. You know, it's like steel. It's, it's, um, old homes are wild. There's, there's this, you learn the trade. And you continue to learn the trade. And yeah. then there's old homes because yeah. everything about an old home, it just won't cooperate. 
You go to cut in a box in the wall. I had a job, yeah. a job just last week for a client. All they wanted to do, they had their switch in their bathroom. They must have put the door in on the, uh, somebody must have installed the door as an afterthought or whatever, because okay. the switch was tucked behind where the door swung open in this little powder room. So yeah. they have to basically open the door, shut the door, turn the switch on. So the solution's easy. <laughs> We've got these little Lutron Cassetta remote switches. All we got to do is put one, you know, switch in the main housing and then give them one where it's accessible, right? Easier said than done. <laughs> that's right. So of course, this new Lutron Cassetta switch is bigger than the switch that is already seated in this 1930s um, wall box. So mm -hmm. I see it. I know it. That box has got to come out. And I'm saying yeah. to myself, that here we go. And as soon as I pull that box out and try to set another single gang, the plaster's crumbling. Oh, jeez. <laughs> So, you know, so you have to just in old homes, it is just one step forward, two steps back. Yeah. Everything's a problem to solve. And, and you, you always have to constantly tell yourself because I've worked on some really old homes. Yeah. In our area. And then you constantly have to tell yourself, okay, as soon as I take that wall out, I'm going to find something. It, there's going to be something there that I'm going to have to redo. And 100%. It, no doubt it always happens that way. Yeah. We're, we're starting a kitchen renovation next week. And uh, the guy called me two days ago. He's like, okay, they just took the walls down today. Can you come take a look? I get over there. The, the wall that they want to remove between the living room and dining or the dining room kitchen, everything's in it from, from plumbing to oh my gosh. Uh, the line sets are running through oh. them, like seven electrical oh. circuits. <laughs> it's like, oh man. Oh. All right. Well, well you know. and, and then you get the response of, well, why can't you just take this pipe and move it over here? Well, <laughs> yeah, okay. you just, yeah. Okay, that's a lot of, that's, you get that a lot too, where people are like, well, you can just, well, can you just use the wire that's there and pull your wire through? And it's like, all right, now. Let's start yeah. over. Yeah. Well, cool. Hey, look, B, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I, I, I appreciate I, you I, coming on here. I got, I'm, I have more time. If you've got, okay. if you got more time. Yeah, for it, sure. It's up to you. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I got to come. Yeah. I got some questions for you. Oh, please. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So a couple of things. I mean, what do you, what do you guys in the field, what do you want to see from a, a manufacturer like Tinnipus? What do you want? What do you want to see? What, what, what can we help you with? Oh man. That's a really good question. That's a loaded question, right? I know. It's so it's so loaded. I, you know, honestly, man, I think that, I think that across the board, what you all focus on, you do so well. Um, that I don't know if there's anything lacking. Like, yeah. I don't know if I could say to you, like, hey, I, you know, how about, yeah, you know, the the majority of the tools that we use on a daily basis is you've got your linemen's pliers. Yeah. Um, you've got you've got strippers typically. And then, you, you know, I walk around with insulated screwdrivers and maybe like a beater screwdriver. Gotcha. Um, you know, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward where we're coming from. Okay. And, and those things that you guys supply are, are top of the line. Um, I just really like what you do already. 